Okay, so in this video, we'll take a look at solving for the Z transform. Now, just before we begin on that, there's just a few things I just want to remind you of. So the Z transform, when we use a Z transform, we're working in the discrete time domain and we're transforming into the Z domain. And typically our equations in the time domain, in the discrete time domain, are difference equations, okay? Uh, this is unlike the S transform. Uh, with the S transform, we're working in the continuous time domain and we're going into the S domain. And in the time domain, typically our equations are written as differential equations, okay? So let's continue now with the Z transform. And so the, the, with the Z transform, the definition of the Z transform, so this is capital uh, X, uh, Z is equal to N going from negative infinity to infinity of X of N, and this is a lowercase x, X of N, Z raised to the negative N power, okay? So that's the definition of the Z transform. Now for this, X of N is equal to the discrete function or the function in the discrete time domain, okay? And Z is equal to E raised to the J omega, okay? And this is something that we will address a little bit later on in a lecture, in one of these video lectures, okay? So moving forward, let's say uh, we are asked or we are given a sequence and we're asked to find that sequence, uh, find a Z transform for that sequence. So the sequence that we're looking at is negative 0.18 and that is raised to the n minus two power, okay? Uh, and this is defined for n equal to zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth, okay? So this is a sequence that we have and we're looking to find the Z transform for this. So if you think about this, you may recognize this as a power series, okay? And for this power series, we'll say that this sequence here is X of N, which is, we'll call a signal, okay? We may rewrite this and show you that it's a power series or uh, by doing the following. So we're gonna take this here and break it up into two parts. And you know that we may break it up so that we have negative 0 0.18 raised to the negative 2 power. And this will be times negative 0 0.18 raised to the nth power. Again, for n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Okay? So if we take a closer look at this, inspect this just a little bit closer, we can see that this will be a constant. And this portion here represents our power series. Okay. So now, given that that's the case, um, and if you don't remember this as being a power series, remember summation of n equals negative infinity or let but not next get n equals infinity pardon me zero should be zero to infinity of a of n right and this power series here is equal to one over one minus a where the absolute value of a is less than one, and that's for, again, all ends from zero to one to two, three, so on and so forth, okay? So now you should be able to see that this looks very similar to this, 
okay these two look very similar so because of that then if we want to uh, rewrite this or change this into the Z domain we need to use a definition that we uh, wrote before okay so X of Z then and again this X is capitalized okay X of Z is equal to negative 0 0.18 raised to the negative 2 power summation from n equals 0 to infinity okay and the reason it's n equals 0 versus the negative infinity is because n here remember began at 0 okay so n equals 0 uh, so this now is negative 0 0.18 raised to the nth power z raised to the negative n okay and so this portion right here is my a of n from over here okay and this a of n along with all of this remember is equal to my x of n plus that constant that we had right so in other words this is this portion times the constant okay and so hence that's why we have the constant here and all of this okay all right so now that we have this let's uh simplify it a little bit so x of oops x of z then we may say is equal to and let's go ahead and uh, calculate this so this comes out to be equal to three zero point eight six four two all right summation going to infinity n equals zero negative zero point one eight times z to the minus one and all of this raised to the nth power okay so now that this is now that we've gotten this then let's go ahead and simplify this some more so remember that this right is equal to this okay according to our uh, information or equation for the power series here and so therefore then we may say then that x of z is equal to three zero point eight six four two times one over and it's going to be one minus okay and inside here we're going to have negative 0 0.18 z raised to the negative one power okay and all that okay so this right here this term is equal to our a from the power series uh, information that we have up here all right and so we can simplify this just even a, a little bit more so this becomes then 30.8642 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.18 z to the minus one okay all right however though we're not finished with this okay we're not finished with this uh, we need to find the region of convergence for this the region of convergence okay and sometimes you'll see it's uh, written as r o C R O C for short. Okay, so now the region of convergence for this. So what is the region of convergence? Region of convergence is a set of all values of z for which x of z attains a finite value. Okay, so in other words, if we have x of z, okay, and we know that to be equal to the summation again from n equals negative infinity so I'm just using the definition here to infinity of x of n 
let me just move that up a little bit more, of x of n, z to the minus n, this, when we take the absolute value of this, must be less than infinity, in other words, okay? So we have to get to some finite value. So since that's the case, we need to get to some finite value, right? All right, let me uh, switch papers here. The only way to make sure we get to some finite value is to make sure that the denominator from the equation before, okay, and let me bring that back. The denominator here, okay, cannot go to zero, or okay, so, because if this denominator goes to zero, then the entire thing goes to infinity, right? One over zero gives you infinity. And so if it goes to infinity, then it gets here, and that's not what we wanted to do, okay? So let's go ahead now and rewrite this on here just so we have a point to look at. Let me make sure everything's on the screen. So that's x of z, okay? Again, remember it's equal to, for our uh, problem here, 8642, one over one, oops, one over one plus 0 0.18z to the minus one, right? Okay, so that means then that one plus 0 0.18z to the minus one, okay, uh, that needs to be uh, less than, okay, or pardon me, it needs to be greater than, And it's the absolute value. This needs to be greater than zero. Okay, it cannot be zero. It needs to be greater than zero. And so therefore then we may go ahead and solve for this. This becomes then one is greater than, uh, it would be the absolute value of negative 0 0.18 z to the minus one. Okay, but since it's absolute value, we don't have to worry about that really, right? Okay. And so therefore then we get that Z has to be, Z, the magnitude of Z needs to be greater than 0 0.1, oops. It needs to be greater than 0 0.18, okay? Or the magnitude of 0 0.18, whatever way you wanna look at that, okay? And so this then is the information for our region of convergence. So Z needs to be larger than that. So if we look at a complex plane here, okay, if we look at a complex plane, and let's say this is our unit circle that goes around here. So then this is one on the imaginary line, this is negative one on the imaginary line, this is one on the real, and this is negative one on the real, okay? As we start to move out from the center and increase, we cannot have any poles within the region of convergence. And that's why this needed to be uh, greater than uh, the, the zero here, okay? So we cannot have no pole, any poles within that region of convergence. So what happens is it says that we, can, we would have a pole if Z ended up being equal to, okay? If Z ended up being equal to uh, 0 0.18 then we'd have a pole within that region there so because of that then we have a circle that's in here and let's say that circle it looks a little large but that's okay 0 0.18 okay so that that circle has a radius of 0 0.18 okay the region of convergence then occurs outside of that okay so we'd have a finite value for x of z as long as z is larger than 0 0.18, okay? So again, this has been a lecture on solving for the z transform, okay? Uh, please check my YouTube channel out for additional information on videos on solving for z transform and inverse z transform.